All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for, for taking the, the time to, to, to watch this video where we're hopefully going to answer some of the COVID-19 vaccine questions, concerns, and doubts uh, that we all may have. Um, so obviously, the COVID-19 pandemic has, has affected pretty much every aspect of our lives, whether it's our, our career, uh, our family life, our social lives, uh, even our travels. So, so I'm hoping that now that we're in 2021, uh, there's a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel um, as far as the vaccine goes. Um, and obviously, it's, it's natural that with this vaccine, a lot of people, many of us have questions, concerns, doubts. Should we take it? Should we not? Should I wait? And so I'm hoping that today we will be able to answer some of those questions. So uh, I will be joined very shortly by Dr. Sajad Fazal, who is a doctor here in Canada, and he has been uh, heavily involved in everything COVID uh, over the last say, eight to nine months. So hopefully he'll, he will join us very soon and we can answer some of, some of these questions that, uh, that all of us have. So, and if any of you have any questions, I've got a, a set of my own questions, about five or six of them. Uh, but if any of you have any questions, please uh, feel free to, to comment. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll see where, where that goes. So I'm hoping that uh, Dr. Fazil will, will join us very soon. But yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, uh, please put them uh, in in the chat, and I'll, I'll, if we have time, I'll be sure to uh, to ask them. But just as a as a guide, uh, some of the questions that we will be discussing are obviously things like should I should I take the vaccine? Should I wait? Is one vaccine better than the other? Um, you know, what if there's women who are pregnant or breastfeeding? You know, is it safe for them to take it? Um, I will also look into a little bit about how long are we going to be protected for if if we take the take the vaccine and questions along along those lines and and hopefully if I have some time I will even ask are we ever going to go back to uh, not wearing masks or social distancing so hopefully uh, we will we will get to that so let me see if I can get Brother Sajad or Doctor Sajad to join us uh, here I have and hopefully he will accept it very soon. But once again, thank you for those who've joined. Um, I'll try and not make it too long. We'll try to keep it quick. Hopefully 20 minutes or so, if not, if even sooner. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see where we go. But uh, yeah, so I've got about five or six questions here. I'm just waiting for uh, uh, the Fazil to join us. Oh, there he is. So, John, Salaam alaikum. 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 alaikum Salaam. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Thank you once again for, I know we've spoken a lot on the phone before this, but uh, thank you for taking the time to give us a little part of your, of your weekend. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks for arranging it. No, no, you're, you're very welcome. I, I hope we can do many more of these, but uh, yes. we'll, we'll see. We'll see when, when the time is right. But um, let's get started. So I know as a doctor in Canada, you've been heavily involved in, in, in everything COVID for the last, say, eight to nine months. Can you tell us the kind of things you've been involved in, just as a quick intro, the kind of things you've been involved with um, since the pandemic began? Yeah, um, so it's, it's, been a, it's, it's been an interesting year, right, for everyone. Um, Absolutely. It's been challenging, it's been tough. Um, yeah. So I'm a public health researcher at the University of Calgary um, here in Canada. And uh, during this time, since uh, the beginning of 2020, I've been involved in COVID-19 misinformation research. Um, and right now we are um, looking at uh, research into vaccine hesitancy, um, the reasons, the causes, um, and how do we address them. So that's what I've been uh, working on uh, recently. At least in which which kind of leads into perfectly in what we're about to discuss today, vaccine hesitancy. So Exactly. Um, Let's let's start now. Obviously, in Canada at the moment, we we have the two vaccines that have been approved: the the Pfizer Correct. vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Um, I know from the little bit of reading that I've done that they're they're stored differently, they're tra uh, transported differently. The first question is: Is there is one better than the other, or can I should I just take whichever one I get? Can I pick? Can I choose which one I want? Yeah, very good question, actually. Um, I've been asked that a couple of times as well. Um, it's something that many people have on their mind. So 
First of all, um, so far, what we have seen um, in Canada, in the United States, in various other countries, you don't have a choice of saying, I want this vaccine candidate or that vaccine candidate. Okay. Whatever is available to you in that region um, is what you will be given. So in Canada, we have approved both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, yeah. um, and they're being distributed uh, differently. So the Moderna vaccine will go more to the rural areas, um, to the uh, northern territories of Canada, where it's where it's difficult to get those ultra cold storage fridges, which the Pfizer right. vaccine needs, needs right? Yep. So they are making this decision on a logistical basis, which makes sense. But with the two vaccines, um, the efficacy of the vaccine is almost the same. Now, both the vaccines, um, they looked at their first endpoint. <clears throat> whether the vaccine prevents somebody from developing symptomatic disease, which means if you okay. get COVID-19, uh, will the vaccine allow your body's immune system uh, to fight off against uh, uh, COVID-19. And so you won't develop symptomatic disease and severe disease and then eventually death, right? So that's right. the protective thing they're looking at. And both of them have almost 95% efficacy in that. So that means they're both equally or similarly effective. When you okay. look at the side effects of the vaccine, they're also very similar. There are some minor side effects, such as the pain at the injection site. Um, you'll have a fever. You might have diarrhea. You might have nausea slightly. Um, so these are also same similar minor side effects, which, by the way, we also see in other vaccines, such as the flu shot. Right, right, exactly. Right. Um, so there hasn't been any major side effects. I mean, if you are allergic uh, to some of the components of the vaccine, that's a whole different issue. Right. Um, and that is why we always advise everyone to speak with their uh, family doctors, their healthcare practitioners, so that you can know those allergies. Um, but otherwise, the safety and effectiveness of both the vaccines is equal. So therefore, it doesn't matter whether you get uh, Moderna or Pfizer. Understood. It doesn't matter. Okay. So we can get any, whatever comes first to us, I guess. Exactly. Perfect. Um, another, another question that I've been reading a lot about is, uh, well, obviously geared towards women. Um, what, does this vaccine have any, any impact or effect on, on women who are uh, pregnant or breastfeeding? Yeah, very good question. Um, so currently there isn't enough data to show whether it would have any adverse effects. However, the recommendation is if somebody is pregnant um, and their risk of getting COVID is high, they should be vaccinated or they are maybe in one of those groups that has to get the vaccine first, which is a frontline healthcare worker, right? True. Um, and if they're pregnant and they're in that group, then they need to speak with their family physician um, and accordingly take the vaccine. The recommendation is for them to take the vaccine. The reason is because there hasn't been any signs that they, they sh they, the, according to the science and the mechanism, there is no reason for there to be any adverse effects to pregnant women. And this is also based on uh, some of the previous vaccines that we have seen. Right. Um, in terms of breastfeeding, particularly, and the fetus, there is no data for that yet. So no are, data at all? No data at all. So, so it's still up in the air, kind of. It's still up in the air, yeah. So right. does it mean it's, it's, it's dangerous? No. But uh, it's something that has to be, uh, that needs more research. And so this is uh, uh, one of those areas where we are still studying about the vaccine, right? Because as I told you, that the vaccine will prevent you from developing symptomatic disease. Right. Does it mean if you are standing next to somebody who has COVID-19 and that person cuffs his heart out <laughs> right next to you, right, and you have already taken the vaccine, both doses, you won't get COVID-19, the virus won't be transmitted to you? No, not at all. A lot of people have this misconception that if I take the vaccine, that virus won't reach me. What if I won't ah. reach you? It's not an invisible shield like in the Avengers movie. Right, right? interesting. It's not. So you will, so the transmission will happen. Right. Right, except um, whether, whether you will develop symptomatic disease is the, is the question. And you will not develop symptomatic disease 
because the the you are already your immune system is already equipped to identify and fight off the virus that's what the vaccine ah, has done makes it sense okay your immune system right. um, now the question of transmission which means after somebody gets the vaccine and let's say they get covid right will they be able to transmit it to somebody else or will they be able to carry right. it and transmit it to somebody else unknown yet the right. moderna vaccine according to preliminary data has shown that it may have some sort of effectiveness or it may have an effect that it will prevent a uh, transmission okay so that's a positive sign but we are still waiting for more data to assess that whether it will whether it stops transmission and if it does by what percentage understood so i mean that pretty much answered one of the other questions i had for you that if mm. i was to get the vaccine if i mm. if i get vaccinated then can i still carry it so the answer i'm guessing is yes i can still carry it but the transmission of it or the symptoms of it rather sorry the symptoms of it would be a lot less severe or maybe none exactly and and now what what and exactly and what we need to find out now the research is is whether if somebody has already taken the vaccine if he gets covid while his immune system is fighting it will there be enough viral load for him to give it to somebody else give it to someone else yeah right so that's still the research is going on we are hoping it's going to be a positive answer yeah um and that's where and this is why we still continue to tell people you got the vaccine but still wear a mask Right. Cuz you right. don't want to get it in the first place, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, your immune system will fight it, but you don't want to get it in the first place. You continue wearing a mask, you continue physical distancing, and that's where we stand. Absolutely. Uh but just before we go away from the the whole pregnant breastfeeding uh, discussion, would it be a perfectly acceptable uh logic for somebody in that position to say I'm just going to stay home. I I I will not get the vaccine until, you know, I'm no longer in that state. um can i just stay home and 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 be careful and not expose myself to anything and not get the vaccine see that yeah okay that's a very good question now now we're talking about the decisions and and here we look at risk benefit ratio right right how how much is that person sure that they won't be exposed to the virus right mm. that's okay. the question you know your uh, family comes home how much are they taking care of themselves when they go good outside, point. right good point. somebody slips somewhere and you're in trouble right very good so, point yeah i have seen healthcare professionals some who are my own colleagues who are pregnant and have taken the vaccine ah okay yeah yeah so so you have those cases because um so far the data shown it it's it's safe in terms of the in terms of those who are pregnant right um in terms of breastfeeding still no data yet yeah. uh, but there is But when you look at the mechanism of action of the of the vaccine um in previous vaccine data um there is no sign or no reason to think that it would be detrimental understood and so i would say it's a personal decision that somebody discusses with their family physician right and outweighs this risk benefit ratio and then makes a decision accordingly understood no that makes perfect sense um but here in canada yes when will i know it's my turn um <laughs> you know like is, is there some system that's being developed or something where i i have to sign up or has has there been any rumors on that or any information or preliminary information on that like when when will it be my turn yeah so good question over here so far um the ontario government i saw released some sort of timeline on how they're going to go about it okay um uh, yeah. We are lucky first of all that the government of Canada has purchased enough vaccines um to vaccinate all of us in this country right okay. and some spare as well so that that's very good um and the goal is to have everyone vaccinated by the end of summer right end of the summer okay yeah so somewhere in the fall probably would be would be would be what, what we are thinking um somewhere there now the important thing to keep in mind is it's going to go by those who are at most at risk right so right. it's started with people in long term care homes and many of the, many of the uh, elderly who are in those long term care homes any of the people who are in uh, later on will be old age homes uh, as well as all the staff uh, who work in those areas as well as those who work in uh, uh, frontline healthcare workers are getting vaccinated now as we speak right right the question is who's the next phase yeah so some people have uh, say that it the next phase could include um and that's what the federal government is starting a pilot project on the next phase could include 
uh, inmates and ah, the correctional okay. officers. Now, the reason is because those are the areas where you see the most outbreaks. Mm, and, then I, and then I, if I was making this decision, I would say the next in line should be um, those who are working in, uh, uh, who are working uh, in factories where it's difficult to maintain uh, social distancing. So mm. meat packers or those who work in the food industry, right? Mm. That would, because we've seen more outbreaks there already. So I would say that that's the next stage. And then I would say going to probably um, educators who are, who are working with the kids in school. So accordingly, you're, we're looking at who was at most at risk, where were the highest deaths occurring, and where were there more outbreaks? And that's how they uh, prioritize people. Now, there are some researchers who say, you know what? Let's give it to the youngest people in the population, like 20, 30 year olds. Reason? Because they are saying, well, those people are anyway not going to follow the rules. Why don't we just vaccinate? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so so the, the, there is different schools of thought. Right. Um, I think the government is going to look at where the outbreaks are, who's at most at risk, and accordingly they would uh, go about. Everyone will know when their time comes. So I think so far, if you work in a hospital and you are among those few first uh, people who work with patients, then you generally get an email from your employer that it's your time to go and get the vaccine. Ah, okay. So I think accordingly, if they go that way, the employers would be the ones, I think, uh, uh, sending out that email or the province would directly contact somebody. Understood. So then the, the very next question would be, once I get the vaccine, is there any data on how long I'm protected for? Is yeah, it just that, a one shot and I'm done or, you know, yeah. anything so along those lines? Um, so it's two shots. So it is two shots. It's two shots, yeah, okay. on, 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 a, on a gap of around 28 days, 21 days, depending on which vaccine About you're taking. Okay, okay. Um, and after the two shots is when you get this 95% effectiveness. Ah, okay, after both shots, okay. After okay. both shots, yeah. So after the first one, some preliminary shows, you might get 50, you might get 60%. Um, uh, effectiveness, uh, but then after two shots, and not just after the, it's not like today I take the short, the second shot, and I'm good. No, there's right. a there's a leg time of 14 days to reach that uh, uh, protection. Interesting. Okay. Right. So you get your shot, first shot after uh, a week after that, um, somewhere in between, you get this uh, uh, protection. You get a second dose. 14 days after that, that's when you reach the around the, around the 95% uh, protection. Um, and effectiveness of the vaccine. Now, how long you will have, the jury is still out. I've seen some researchers predict around one year. I've seen some people say around six months. So okay. it, we are still looking into that. And I mean, when we have our next session, I think we can dive deeper into that where I can explain why some people say this, why other people say that. Okay, perfect. No, no, thank you for that. That's good information there. Um, will it be mandatory to get it? Ah, good question. Now, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I don't think so. Because every other vaccine, you can always, I mean, some are mandatory when you want to send your kids to school, but there is always a way out where you can ask for an exemption, right? Right. Um, I'm not a fan of it, because I believe in the <laughs> science and public health. I think, uh, you know, if you're going to send your kid to a particular school, then you better make sure you vaccinate them. Um, but, uh, you see, you, you know, well, that there are some countries, for example, in East Africa, that have made it mandatory to get a yellow fever vaccine. Otherwise you can't. Yes. Yeah. Right. So it's not, so when some people say, Oh, how can they make it mandatory? They're taking over my rights. No, no, it's not something new. It's been done. Many other right. countries do that. You have to get a yellow fever vaccine. You have to get a BCG vaccine. If you're born in Tanzania, it's a must, Absolutely. for example. Yeah. yeah. So it's there. It's not something new to have mandatory vaccination, especially if you're traveling, then if you're going to another country, then yeah. Now, the thing to understand is, I think, and this is my perspective, up, up and until over 80% of the people have not been given the opportunity to take the vaccine, making it mandatory is unfair. Okay. So for example, I Got didn't it. get the vaccine, you didn't get the vaccine. And they are saying, oh, to, 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 to go to a certain uh, place, or to engage with a certain business, you need to have the vaccine. Yeah. Well, I didn't get the chance to get it yet. Neither did you. So, so that's unfair on me. It's not right. like I refuse to take it. If it comes, I'll be like, yeah, give, my, give me my jab now. 
Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. But you're, you're not there in line yet. So I think that's why we're talking about health equity and human rights in that space. Right. Um, so what I would say is up to then, I think it shouldn't be mandatory. Um, after that, businesses would, I believe, would make it mandatory. So airlines and countries would make it mandatory. I'm pretty sure about that. So that they can protect their own people. Um, and just to make sure that the airline industry is much safer. Uh, some concerts might have it. So I'm pretty sure... Um, uh, individual entities will make it mandatory. Will the government make it mandatory? I highly doubt it. Okay. Um, we always try to get the carrot first and the, then the stick, right? And by, by, having, by telling people, if you take it, you get access to A, B, C, D, you are incentivizing it. Mm, got it. So that's got another it. way of looking at it, right? No, I think, I think it makes, I, I love the point that you brought up about the health equity. I think that's, that's I, I've never heard that one before. And I think it makes so much sense. And I think you've probably seen that uh, Qantas, the official airline of Australia, has already made it mandatory that you will not fly with them until you have the vaccine. So I think what you yes. said makes makes perfect sense that a lot of people in, in, in the hospitality industry or the, or, or the tourism industry are going to go that, that route, I, yes. I, I suppose. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Just like the way um, some countries did with the 19 to 0 um uh, having a, a 90 uh covid-19 negative test right yeah yeah many countries have implemented already you can't enter without it you can't so enter without similarly, it. No, no. they'll just jump on this horse absolutely but, but i i have to ask this do you think in 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 your opinion will we ever go back to life as we knew it uh, you know not wearing masks not social distancing um, you know, do you see that in the horizon as far away as it may be, but do, do you see that um, as, as something realistic looking at it from today? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> at the end of the day, um, as a human race, we have gone through a lot. We've gone through two world wars. We've gone through all sorts of stuff. Um, we've gone through the Spanish flu, which is a pandemic, which half of the people don't even know about it, right? Um, right. So we will persevere through innovation, through unity. Um, it's going to take long, though. I mean, the way the vaccine rollout is going on, it's still a little slow right. um, around the world. So I would say, yeah, maybe mid-2022. Okay, that's not too far off. That's not yeah. too far off. Yeah, I'm, I'm optimistic. But I, I'm ballparking it over there that things will go to normal. Now, I say that. However, I do hope is one that some of the things we learned from COVID, we take it on. We mm. take it on. So, for example, hand sanitization and the importance of washing your hands. Absolutely. You know, there are people who are not washing their hands even after using the washroom, right? Pre-COVID. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, really. Um, yeah. Um, and, 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 and you're like, wait, what? So I hope that's something that people continue for life. Because you're not only preventing COVID, that right. you don't prevent the flu, you're preventing many other infectious diseases. But just by doing yeah. something as simple as that, right? Um, so I think that goes on. The other thing, I hope it's into people's mind that if you're not feeling well, you have the flu or anything else, this is post-COVID we're talking, right? Or any other infectious right. disease. Don't go outside. Don't start hugging people and say, hey, what's up? No, no, no. <laughs> you're six day home, you know? So I think certain things um, that we have learned or not that we didn't know, but that has been en em enforced and embedded in people's minds. I hope these practices continue. And then also the fault lines that we have seen in the healthcare system. Oh, we have a supply problem when it comes to masks. Remember mm -hmm. the beginning of the pandemic? We had to ask manufacturers to change. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, the way people in long-term care homes are being treated. So there's a right. huge issue there. So I hope all these things we look at it and we see that these things were there pre-COVID, but COVID has exposed it, misinformation and all these things. I hope we take that into consideration and say, you know what, these are the areas we need to work on. This is what we have learned. Let's take it on and improve our healthcare system as, as well as ourselves as we go post-COVID. I think, I think that's a fantastic point because washing your hands has been around for, for forever. Mm -hmm. um, and this has been kind of like a baptism by fire sort of thing, right? So hopefully... Um, we can certainly take take these along now. Um, just just before we finish off, I, I know at the moment in Canada we only have the the Moderna and the Pfizer uh, Pfizer vaccines. Um, I know there's you know AstraZeneca is working on one, Johnson and Johnson I think is working mm -hmm. on one mm -hmm. as well. 
Um, are, are those the only other two that are working on a vaccine? Uh, how close are they for approvals? Um, any any information on that? There are many others. Um, there are many others, but those two are sort of front runners. Right. And we, we would be looking at probably uh, the AstraZeneca and the Johnson Johnson ones to be the next ones to be approved. Okay. Um, the way they're going. Of course, again, depends on the data that they send to the regulators, Food and uh, US FDA and Health Canada um, accordingly. Um, and if the data makes sense, then they would be approved. AstraZeneca seems to be on the front lines. I mean, the UK has already approved it. Uh, the Johnson & Johnson, um, they also say that preliminary data showed very high efficacy. Uh, so we are waiting to see what that is. Now, there's a lot of researchers that I spoke to who are in the vaccine production space, um, who are looking at that area, and they were telling me that uh, probably the next, the other vaccine that would be coming out later on would be a one-shot vaccine instead of a two-shot vaccine. So okay. that's something that's being researched by the other companies and researchers that are looking at this, um, and maybe that's going to com compete against these ones that are here right now, right? At the end of the day, we have more people to vaccinate than the number of vaccines. So more vaccines that actually work, the better for all of us. So, so I mean, long story short, should I get the vaccine? Yes. Absolutely, yes. Okay. You should get the vaccine. Um, if you have any concerns, talk to your family physician, and then never believe in WhatsApp messages or just a Google search. <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah, there are experts out there. Uh, yeah. Speak to the family physician, get the vaccine. And if you have the opportunity, like, I mean, I, I wish I had the, the opportunity to get it right now, you know? So it's something that people No, I think for. if there was a one-shot vaccine, hey, sign me up, you know? Yeah. Um, just one, be, one and done, just be done with yeah. it, right? So that's the thing. Um, so yeah, so I think that, that's, that's where we are heading to. I think that's the, that's the bottom line. Uh, and yeah. always have to continue following the current public health recommendations. You have seen how the number of cases has been going in Ontario. It's bad. Yeah. We, 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 we had stricter restrictions, if you remember, is one in May than we have right now. Than we have now. And it's worse now and than worse. it was in May. Yeah. <laughs> so we need to be yeah. more strict. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I, I'm really hoping that, that, you know, there's a little bit more light now towards the end of the tunnel because it, it, that COVID fatigue is beginning to really yes. take its toll now. You know, initially we could kind of do away with it, but now it's sort of getting to the point where, um, you know, that, that frustration is beginning to kick in as well. But the good thing is, you know, I was able to ask you all the questions that I wanted to. Uh, I don't see anyone else, although we had a few people watch. No one's really asked any questions. So I'm, I'm hoping my, my questions covered everything. But is there anything that we might not have touched on in the last couple of minutes uh, we're live? Is there anything that you want to share that I might not have asked you or we might not have discussed? I think you touched on everything. All I want to say is if you get a chance to get the vaccine, get it. Um, if you have any questions, ask the, your family doctor and yeah. follow each and every public health recommendation. We need to be united against this fight uh, with COVID-19 right now. Absolutely. Sajad, thank you, so, Dr. Sajad. Thank you so much. I, I know you've been, um, you've been voicing and you've been fighting for this whole the COVID misinformation ever since we started talking. You know, I've been following your work and, and what you've been doing. And I think, I think we need more of that out there. So I, I am grateful to you. Um, for, for everything that, that you're doing for, for our health and Canadian health in general, I guess. And, uh, you know, long may you continue that. And I do appreciate that you took some time to, to answer some of these questions. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks a lot for arranging. Um, you've been a great host. Um, and I look forward thank to you. our second one. Hopefully once the AstraZeneca one uh, or Brody the Johnson just one gets approved, we could have another session. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, I'm hoping that the people who've watched this and will watch it, I will post this on YouTube as well. Oh, nice. um, you know, so I'll, I'll share that with you and we can share that around. And hopefully based on this conversation that we've started, um, I'm hoping that people will have more questions, if any, and then we can absolutely do this, uh, do this once again. Wonderful. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good Thank day. you, Sajad. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Bye-bye. All right. Well, I hope you all uh, enjoyed that 20-minute uh, uh, session. Um, there was a lot of great information that was covered. Um, as, I, as I said, I'll share this on YouTube. So I'm hoping you all will get a chance to, to watch it again after. There was a lot of content that we covered. And if you have any questions, please, you know, um, email them. You know, send them in. Uh, as you just heard, uh, Dr. Sajad and I would, would, would do this again um, if you have any more questions. And uh, um, 
please send, send in those questions, send in those concerns, any doubts, any comments that you may have. And I'm sure Dr. Sujad and I can get together once again um, and, and do this. But up until, up until then, I hope you enjoyed uh, this session. And um, please do share it with your friends and family. And uh, I hope that you will join in uh, on the next one uh, as well. So until then, take care. Bye-bye.